Hey ladies, welcome to Stocks, Bonds, and Cocktails, presented by 2190. I am your host, Marsha Barnes, founder of The Finance Bar. I am all about giving women the financial guidance and tools they need to grow their wealth. I'll be speaking with some of my favorite boss ladies in the financial industry. You all are going to get some amazing advice, I promise. And we'll get to taste some delicious cocktails from our friends at Patron during this series. Okay, grab a notebook, grab a cocktail, and let's get this started. Hanging out with us today is real estate investor, Erica Brown. Erica, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. How are you? I'm doing amazing. Today, we're talking about investing in real estate properties. So while my homegirl, Britt, is mixing our drinks for us, Erica, I want to get started with these 17 properties that you have. Yes. How did you get started? Oh my gosh, just one by one. It's crazy. So I actually worked in finance with the bank for nine years okay. and I had no type of intention of going into real estate. Um, I actually thought I was going to retire from that company. Oh. Um, but what's crazy is as my kids got older, I was looking for a little bit more flexibility. So I began applying for jobs outside of the branch okay. and I was just applying for jobs, applying for jobs, and it was just not happening. So I'm like, what is happening? Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, at the same time, I, I had just moved here to Atlanta and myself and five of my friends, we moved to the west side of town. And this was before all the fancy stuff with the belt line yeah. and all that fun stuff. Um, you know, our folks were like, oh, my gosh, what are you doing moving there? Right. And mm -hmm. we were like, this is what we can afford. Why not live here? <laughs> so we moved there. And um, despite the perceptions of the town, we actually like loved. We fell in love with it. Okay. And as we were you know, telling all of our friends about all the treasures that we discovered in the neighborhood, my, my, I had friends that were like, well, show me this and show me that. And so I would actually be driving them around telling them about houses and things like that, and then pass them on over to another realtor. Mm -hmm. So after doing that 10 times, I was like, well, oh my gosh, that's like six figures. Like right. I could have made that myself. Right. So it was like a perfect time. So it's like, I'm trying to transition to have this more flexible schedule, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you know, I, I'm falling in love with my community and I'm helping others do the same. It was like a natural progression to then begin thinking, okay, like I, I think I want to, actually leave and start my own company and wow. um i wanted to be in real estate but i actually didn't know if i wanted to be a realtor or not i just knew that this was an avenue to be able to you know really impact my community through real estate mm -hmm. impact your community and build wealth yes would that be correct yes that was very important to me it, because i actually moved there to yeah. help be a good neighbor and, and everything like that i really wasn't just interested in making money mm -hmm. i also wanted to like actually provide jobs and be a good impact to my community like be, be of service to your community yes it just so happens that you became a real estate investor yes so out of all the 17 properties that you mm -hmm. have do you have like a story about the greatest fixer upper or the one that was the, the largest fixer upper? Um, so I have a, a greatest fixer upper and I have a largest surprise fixer upper. And okay. I can give you both stories. <laughs> <laughs> so with the greatest fixer upper, um, I, I purchased a rental property in 2016. Mm -hmm. And at the time, it's in a neighborhood that is going through a lot of gentrification and transition. And so on that street there are two other homes that were just kind of like the eyesores people hated walking by them complained about them all that kind of stuff so one of the homes was actually condemned like it needed to be torn down mm -hmm. and, but i really wanted to buy and i seen the potential in the homes right so i went to the tax assessor website where you can actually look up like who owns the home yeah. and i found the owner and then started googling and trying to find the phone number and i actually found the phone number yeah this is a funny story. So I actually <laughs> found the phone number. I contacted the owner and they were like, yeah, I want a hundred thousand dollars. I was like, this house needs to be torn down. You're crazy. I'm not going to give you a hundred thousand for it. So I said, okay, that's fine. I said, well, here, here's my offer. If you change your mind, let me know. So then again, because I, I, I'm familiar with how things work, I went back and I, and I would watch the property and I noticed that the property was open and it wasn't boarded up and right. the yard had you know had grown up and things like that mm -hmm. and so each city has a list of uh, codes like housing codes that each homeowner whether you live in the home or not you have to maintain and okay. so they were so basically i reported 
you know, the home that, that wasn't kept in the condition that's supposed to. Oh. And then that owner received a thousand dollar fine in the mail. Erica, so you reached out to them, you basically told, and then they got fined? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I was like, okay, well, if you don't want to sell the property and you don't want to maintain it, okay, <laughs> that's fine. Here's my number. Right. And then she got that thousand dollar fine in the mail. Right. And then she said, hey, Erica, are you still interested in, in buying this house? I said, absolutely. Yeah. And so we bought it at the price that I offered. And it was it was amazing. Again, we had to actually tear down the back half of the home. OK. But um, we renovated it to this beautiful shotgun house, New Orleans style home. Mm -hmm. It actually has a you know rooftop deck that has city views. And we yeah. were able to rehab it and then sell it to a homeowner. Is that the one that you're most proud of? I think so. Because think that's the one. Yeah, because that strategy and being able it, because I, I was I was personally, you know, wanted to buy the property because I, because of the other home I had on the street. Right. And um, I actually have, I, I basically rehab three homes on that street. Oh. Um, so that street went from a street that, you know, a lot of people didn't like walking down mm -hmm. and things like that. to now this beautiful, a welcoming street with homeowners now involved in the community. So you somewhat had a commitment to that neighborhood yes. to fix the neighborhood up, not yes. just one property. Yes, because you wouldn't want to live by a, a home like that. Exactly. So why why would I be okay, you know, with that being yeah. next to mine? So let's start small and yep. work our way up. Yep. There's so much information out there on the media, in books, mm -hmm. on social media. Everybody wants to flip a property. <laughs> Everyone wants to be a real estate investor. H HGTV. Hashtag real estate investor. Yes. Hashtag level up. <laughs> How yes. can someone start evaluating their local real estate market? Yes, that is a great question. So the, the basic, most basic thing you can do yeah. is to find out in your neighborhood what the like your neighborhood association meetings find out when the neighborhood actually meets to talk about what's happening and okay. that's called a neighborhood association meeting yeah um they generally have in-person and virtual options especially mm -hmm. now due to COVID. and anything that happens in your community actually has to come through the neighborhood association meetings gotcha. um developers and new businesses and other you know new things starting in your community has to actually get the permission from the community in order to start Right. So earlier you talked about when you moved into a neighborhood mm -hmm. and you wanted to invest into properties that was there. Oftentimes people ride down streets, right? Yeah. And they like they have trash out in the front yard. The yard's not, you know, picked up. It's not well maintenance. Right. What would you what advice would you give someone that's like maybe I should just stop and evaluate this area first? Like right. how how do we start there from someone I'm just driving? I'm like, well, maybe, you know, I could afford this home, but I don't like how this neighborhood looks. Right. Do we reach out to like who's over HOA there to identify what the rules and regulations in case I want to take that second step? Right. Well, first. I will say if you are a person that's burdened enough to drive through and to care, okay. I would say, why not consider moving to that area, okay. to that neighborhood? Because what happens is when you have more homeowners that actually own in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. they're going to enforce change, okay. you know, um, more than most renters will. So yeah. I would say consider moving to the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And then if that's not an option for you for whatever reason, then you could actually get involved, um, contact your code enforcement with the city Got it. and or even the neighborhood association generally has a code enforcement person yeah. who is keeping up with those violations um, and help get involved. Yeah. A term I always hear is house hacking. Yes. What is that and how does someone get involved? Yes. House hacking is, the to me, one of the easiest ways to become a real estate investor. Okay. Um, it's basically when you take a portion of your home and you rent out, rent, mm -hmm. it, rent it out to someone else, um, whether you have a basement that maybe you've been using for storage mm -hmm. and you convert that into an Airbnb or you have a duplex and you live on one side and you rent out the other side. Oh, I got it. So for someone that there's, they're not interested in going that far yet, yes. you know, into house hacking, mm -hmm. purchasing a duplex, or maybe they can't even afford it. Yeah. But maybe they have a single family home. Yeah. Like, what tips do you have for us to get started into real estate investing? Yeah, they can actually use one of the rooms in their home and then um. convert that to something that is to be rented out whether that is like what I've done, rent out to, uh, uh, to someone in my church or someone I know, or you can actually host that room on Airbnb. And if you say, okay, I don't have much money to get it set up, 
you have Goodwill, you have Facebook Marketplace. I've picked up dressers mm -hmm. on the side of the road. Yeah. You have all types of options that um, will help you to inexpensively get your room set up. So my room is set up, what do I do? Take pictures, go to yes. Airbnb you and then take upload nice them? pictures. You okay. want to have like the latest iPhone <laughs> or some type of good quality cam camera yeah. because this is like the first thing you see. Just like when you go in um, and you want to, you're searching for hotels for your next vacation. Right. You want to find the Instagram ready pictures, you know, on the best hotels. So it's the same thing with your room that you're looking to host. Got it, got it, got it. So you have you had a great idea about, you know, using a room. Oh, our drinks are here. Yes, oh, yes, ladies. I hate to interrupt. Mm. Thanks so much. This is with the Silver, gravy, and fresh squeezed orange juice. Thank so you. So good. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Sarah. I've been waiting on this. Mm -hmm. So good. That's good. So you talked, Erica, about, you know, renting out a room in our home. Yes. Maybe for an Airbnb. When our son got older, maybe we should have had him to rent out a room <laughs> and to, be, to become an Airbnb, like one of our clients or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But if we've done that mm -hmm. and now we want to expand, mm -hmm. what message would you give us when we're thinking about going to a bank? Are there certain things that we need to consider about financing? Because I'll share a personal story. Yes. My husband and I sold our first property to our son. Oh man, I love so that. So he purchased our property. Uh -huh. At the time, he was overseas. Mm. He was overseas and we were concerned about like going to the bank on his behalf, yeah. taking his income, mm -hmm. you know, does he make enough because he's still still super young. Yes. What should everyone think about when they are considering getting another property? What will the bank start asking us for? Because I believe that's what people fear the most. Yes. You know, what do I need to have? Can I afford this property even if we don't have a renter? Yes. Can you help us with that? Yes, absolutely. So if you are looking, if you, you already are, you own a home and you're looking to purchase another home, okay. the bank is looking for you to have at least 620 to 680. The higher the credit score, the better for that second home. Got when it. you're purchasing your first home, you can have as low as a 500. Okay. But again, when you're purchasing that second home, that's like, okay, you're trying to level up a little bit. I, I, I have a little bit more higher expectations. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, they're looking for two years of consistent employment from either a W-2 or if you're self-employed, two years of consistent income from a tax return. Okay. Got yeah. Um, and then they're looking for a little bit of reserves, yeah. you know? So in the event that, you know, your, your renter, uh, it moves out mm -hmm. and you have to find another one that may take about a month or two. They're looking for you to have a little bit of reserve so yeah. that you can cover, um, you know, that rent if you need to. So is this something real estate agents help us with? Because I, I was under the impression that the only thing my realtor is going to help us with is to find a property. I think some real realtors, because it depends if they are a realtor or, or just a realtor or a realtor investor. Oh, so okay. um, my myself and my team are unique because we are real estate agents, but we are also investors. Got it. So we have a little bit more knowledge in how all of that that process works. So when it comes to banking, you don't you won't give me advice on like maybe these are the banks you could look into because your credit score is this. Mm -hmm. You only have this amount of money in yes. the bank. Is that information that I could seek out my realtor or my real estate? investor from or do I just am I on my own when I head to the bank is no. what I'm really asking. <laughs> you are not on your own. Okay. Whether you have a mentor that works in real estate or your real estate your your realtor, mm -hmm. yes. We have lenders that we work with that actually love our referrals. Got so it. it's actually better if my clients work with my lenders because my lenders want to continue to get referrals from me. Uh, so they make sure my deals make it to the closing table. Right. So yeah. how do I find a good real estate investor? Like what are, do you have any tips around, mm -hmm. like how can I vet them? Should we, yes. get, should we get referrals or maybe who our friends or family have yes. used in the past? Friends and families are going to be your best referrals because they've worked with them. They feel comfortable just like with, you know, any other, a painter or, you know, a carpenter, most likely your first network of mm -hmm. folks you're going to go to is your friends and family. Okay, got it. So if we are, if I'm someone that's an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. entrepreneur, freelancer, gig economy, <laughs> what is the difference between what a bank is looking for for me and for someone that may be nine to five? So first of all, if you are 
a, a self-employed and what a creative person. Yes. You even though you may think, okay, I have this gig, I have this gig, you still need to hire a CPA or a tax accountant okay. that can help you plan your your taxes essentially. Okay. Um, someone that can say, okay, I anticipate. So, so right now we are in September. Okay. And so we have nine months out of the year. Mm -hmm. It's really good, especially if you're self-employed, to meet with your tax professional quarterly to say, okay, I've made X amount of money so far this year. I would like to purchase a home next year. And I anticipate I'm going to make this more That's this good. amount more money. Yeah. And so what do I need to do? Like how much do I need to pay in taxes? How much do I need to X, Y, Z to be able to qualify for that home next year? You have to think ahead, ahead, not behind. That's so good. I have a friend that that happened to. She works in the nonprofit space mm. and she thought that she was approved for a duplex and it didn't work out for her mm. because of her income. Wow. So to your point, we should be thinking as entrepreneurs like in advance. Yes. Even in this year, if I want to purchase a property in the next two years, what you're sharing with us is that maybe meet with a CPA. Everyone tuning in, a CPA. <laughs> we don't want to be out here doing our taxes ourselves. No. When we are trying to level up financially yes. in life, meet with them, Erica. Mm -hmm. Say that in the next two years, I want to buy a property that may cost three, four hundred thousand dollars. Any recommendations on how I need what of what type of money I need to be earning? Yes. Ask the questions. Yes. yes. Ask the questions. And okay. so they're gonna say, you know, okay, this is how much money you need. They're gonna also like my CPA, my lender, we I get everybody connected. Right. right? Your, your team. Yes. That's a part of my team. Yeah. And they're gonna say, okay, I, I need to make this amount of money. I say, okay, if I make this amount of money, how much do I need to pay in taxes? Okay. And a good CPA will actually recommend some other avenues to help you like IRAs and things like that, mm -hmm. to help you to be able to reduce your taxable income yeah. but not have to pay a lot of money in taxes. Yeah, but then there's student loan debt too. Yes, and Where we all have it, unfortunately. We have them. Yes. And some people are paying upwards of like $800 to $1,000 or more yes. a month. Many people are paying mortgage payments. Mm -hmm. Has anything changed with the government or anyone you know, recently about like how can we bypass that stopping us yes. for being approved for a mortgage? or to even be able to invest into the real estate market. Absolutely. I have a client here in Atlanta that mm -hmm. recently purchased her first loft and she was actually the first homeowner in her entire family. Okay. And she was very nervous. Uh, she actually re uh, was referred to, uh, from her friend okay. and she was nervous to even contact me because she was like, I have a, I have 150,000 student loans. I'm pretty sure I can't qualify. But this year, the, the cha it changed to where um, in the past, they would use 1% of your total amount of student loans, and then they would factor that into your debt to income. But now they actually take your monthly payment and they use that instead of your total amount of student loans. And wow. so my client went from not being able to be approved for a mortgage to now being able to buy a loft for 400000 So how do we know that in advance, though, Erica? You know, we so mm -hmm. many of us have this fear. Yes. inside of us. They're like, is it time for me to move, you know, out of an apartment or out right. with my friends? We are, we are, we are making the money, right. but we are afraid to level up, you know, in the real estate market. And we, when it comes to finances, like from my view of speaking mm -hmm. with so many people, we're afraid to go to the bank because we're afraid of being told no. So in just, okay. So anytime you're fearful about anything, we yeah. all have various fears that we, we, we need to work through. Right. Anytime I say that you're fearful about something, that means you need to increase your knowledge. Okay. Right? So if I'm fearful about X, Y, Z, that means I need to go and do the research. I yeah. need to push through my fear, acknowledge your fear, acknowledge mm -hmm. that you're nervous, push through that fear and, and get the knowledge. Reach out to a realtor, reach out to a loan officer mm -hmm. and actually get the knowledge to find out what are the facts with this situation. And then once you have the facts, then you can come back and say, okay, where do I stand? stand? No, know, knowing how I feel, knowing I have the knowledge, where do I stand now? And you're able to actually make an educated decision yeah. based on true knowledge and not just based out of fear and scarcity. Not out of fear and scarcity, right. Erica, but how do we know when it's time for us to pause and wait? I always uh -huh. go back to the media because that's what we hear yes. all the time, right? 
we're always on our phone, so we see that everyone is doing it. Yes. I don't want to miss out. And now I'm able to get a property, but how do we know that maybe we need to pause for a moment right. and get a few other things in order? Even if we have the credit score, right. even if we have the income, but we don't have too much of reserves in the bank. Right. How do we know when it's time for us? Just wait a moment. Right. Your lenders, a good lender should say that. Okay. They should, they, they're going to review all of your entire financial picture. Yeah. The, your assets, your income, your credit, everything. And they're going to say, okay, I, I want you to hold off a little bit and yeah. I want you to save money. A good lender will give you a game plan. That's why we recommend going early. Don't mm -hmm. wait and say, okay, I'm going to wait till I get to that, you know, 650 or 700 because I, I heard you get a better, uh, 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 you know, uh, interest rate. It's like, no, go as soon as you can mm -hmm. so that you can get the facts and then you can, we can actually help you set up a plan. That's right. So if you do need to pause, if you need to save more money, if you do need to decide X, Y, Z, you know what you're going into on the front end. Because once you get into your property, you want to be confident that you yes. can afford the property financially. You don't want yes. the stress that I'm in here yes. and that's great, but this is not the American dream that I imagine it to be. Yes. And you don't yeah. want to continue to rent. And then next year you find out that same property that you were interested in that was 300000 is now 400000 right. And you are now priced out and you aren't able to afford in that same neighborhood that you were interested in before. Right. So we talked about a lot, okay? Yeah. Let's recap. To okay. Wrap it back around. We looking into your neighborhood's real estate market. What do we need to remember? You need to remember neighborhood associations. Neighborhood okay. associations. How do I Facebook, you can find out you can actually Google your neighborhood, Atlanta West End. And most likely your neighborhood association will pop up. There should be a website and then you can find out when the meeting times are. One more time for us. What is house hacking? House hacking is when you live on one side of the property and you rent out a room or another space in your property. Airbnb, Erica, I have a property already. Mm -hmm. How can I get started to say that I'm a hashtag real estate investor too? <laughs> How can I turn this little office bedroom into some money, a money making machine for you? You need to get on Facebook Marketplace, Goodwill, <laughs> you know, save that thousand dollars and convert that room to a Instagram ready space. Preparing for loans. Yes. How do I get prepared? You want to contact you want to contact a realtor that will connect you to a lender. You complete a loan application and they will give you a list of things that you need to prepare. Got it. One more time, Erica. This Great so conversation. How do you like yours? So good. It's so good. I can't wait to wait, make this at home. Before I let you go, I want to just wrap it back around really quickly to mm -hmm. your 17 properties because I know that's what many people want. They want to not work you know, mm -hmm. and just have properties where they're making money from. Absolutely. So where did that confidence come from you? Did you get one, you know, your income increased, you moved to number two, and it may have not been your vision to have 17 properties, but right. what did that look like for you? So first of all, it's very important for me to live below my means. That's okay. very, very important. What does that mean, Erica? That living, means, living below your means, we read it, we hear about it. What does <laughs> living below your means mean? So for example, for a two income household, it okay. means to live off of one income for me uh -huh. versus maxing it out at two, Okay, right? Um, so that was really important. And then we started with one property at a time. Mm -hmm. So I bought one property, we, you know, I renovated that property, put that on Airbnb, got the systems going successfully. Then I went back to sell some more houses right. and use that income to then invest in the next one. Okay. And then I just kept doing that. And each time as I'm investing, I'm learning. I'm constantly challenging myself to say, okay, I, wa I wanted to do five. I have five now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how do I get to the next level? My big, my biggest thing at first was like, I wanted to have $10,000 of passive income by the time I was 40. Uh, I'm like, okay, well, I'm 35 now. So I can increase my, my challenge. And so it's to continue to challenge myself. Um, also, what, wait, wait, Erica, one moment. Where did yes. that $10,000 passive income from? Why was $10,000 your number? I don't know. Okay. It, it was crazy. It was just one of those things that's like, oh, $10,000. I can you know? live well. That's enough for yes, me. Yes, enough, yes. enough for me to be able to save, invest, invest into real estate market. Was right. that part of it? Yes, it was. And it was like, okay, with this, with this uh, level of income, mm -hmm. I have that security to know if the real estate market changes and we hit a recession or things like that, uh, I can still be able to take care of my family right. and then we can be in a good situation. Okay. Um, and it's also really important um, for me, I had a real estate investor mentor okay. that helped to provide some guardrails for me. So I, as I was learning, mm. I would run things by saying, hey, what do you think about this? You think this is a good deal? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's a great deal. Or, ah, uh, no, 
it's not or hey have you considered this and so it was a person that can that was able to challenge me and help to create that guardrail so that i didn't like make stupid decisions so part of our recap we didn't say it but everyone tuning in erica mentioned the importance if you are interested in real estate investing is to seek out a real estate investment mentor mentor yes is that and right that may not be an agent some agents are also investors, but some aren't. It okay. could be someone that that's, that's not even licensed, yeah. but someone that has a uh, you know a good amount of real estate investment properties mm -hmm. and that actively you know uh, invest. So that is a real estate mentor. Okay, Erica, send us home with the challenge. I'm ready now. I'm <laughs> All ready right. for that Airbnb. Yes, you know, to get me started <laughs> with that room but on I, Facebook Marketplace. With that room, <laughs> but I need I need a challenge. I yes. need, you know as we mentioned, like taking your time, but to get started. Yes. Give me a challenge, please, some resources so I can just get this show on the road. Yes. The first challenge, the one challenge I will say is to find a real estate investor mentor. That is my challenge. Okay. Whether it's within your existing network, look around and see who owns more than, you know, more than two properties. Yeah. If you don't have that type of network, join a Facebook group. Mm -hmm. See who is having, you know, what real estate investor mentors are out there. Okay. Thanks so much again to Bar Vegan here in Atlanta. Erica, our dynamite real estate <laughs> investor with these 17 properties. Aww. Thank you for sharing with us today. Thank you so much. And for, for so me. much of your knowledge. Thank you. Where can everyone find you? I am on Instagram at Erica B on IG. Okay. I'm also on YouTube at Erica B Owning It and Living It. Eric, what do you share on YouTube? Oh, behind the scenes, I actually, I have a real estate in investor and I'm also a homeschool mom. Oh. So I talk about the connection between me homeschooling my kids and also running a family business. Nice. Thanks so much again. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you all for tuning in to Stocks, Bonds, and Cocktails. Make sure you follow 2190 on your favorite social platforms. And be sure to visit 2190.com where you can find all of these incredible cocktail recipes and more. Check it out. I'm Marsha Barnes, and this has been Stocks, Bonds, and Cocktails. Cheers.